Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 21st meeting of the Hyde Park Planning Board. Please note that the normal exits are blocked at this moment. If there is some kind of emergency, you'll have to go out either the exit that way or the exit this way. And now join me as we salute the American flag. I want to first thank my colleagues, especially Vice Chair Dexter, for running a very nice meeting that I was that I missed last time, and I have to say, having watched it, it was a good one to miss. It was a really long one. So you've trained us well. <laughs> we hope tonight won't take so long. The first item on the agenda is a new public hearing for a proposed project at the Culinary Institute lands. It's for a hotel as well as villas. Um, this is located on Campus Road and Albany Post Road. Gentlemen, would you like to come up and do a brief presentation on what we're doing? Uh, Megan, a motion up for the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 A brief description. Sorry. Michael. Just Very brief. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let me start. So there's a larger project that is under review for site plan review. But because there are uh, endangered species on the site, the actual entrance is going to require, if this is approved, it will require a new intersection at the at St. Andrews Road and Route 9. The intersection would actually extend out toward the uh, west, toward the river, and then curve be a private road using to access the actual hotel and all the amenities that are in there. Because DEC requires a certain time frame in which trees can be felled, but they're not going to actually propose any disturbance. And the difference is, is that once trees are felled, they're left in place. Disturbance means when they do ground disturbance, so pulling stumps out of the road that require chipping, et cetera, that would require equipment as well as uh, stormwater, uh, stormwater measurement pra management practices. So tonight the public hearing is just on a sort of phase one project, meaning just the ability to fell the trees or lop them down with hand saws. That's all in a general area that will be the uh, proposed entrance to the site. Mr. Zarin, I'll take it over. That, that is, I th that's correct. Um, as you know, as part of, <coughs> part of that uh, plan would be um, <coughs> a recommendation for a $130,000 restoration bond uh, that if we don't engage in substantial construction by April 2025, which would be the next uh, season for construction um, during the bat that the town would have the ability well the town would notice notice us and we would have to restore the property substantial amount of trees and chipping and if for whatever reason we did not do that the town would have the ability to access would have the ability to exercise uh, and the bond as well as um, access the property through an easement that we're going to have to provide you um, and uh, and uh, perform that work. Now, I, I think that's be very remote. We intend to move very quickly and, uh, and do that work. Uh, primary reason that the trees are so important now is that the first project, as uh, a project that we're going to work on, is the road improvements at that intersection which DOT has requested and was happy that we were going to put first and and then have the access road so that's I think a s summary and for those in the audience who haven't heard this before a restoration bond is a sum of money that's put up our engineer works with the applicants I'm actually saying this because I think we have some new people in the audience who I think are here for a project or some sort of Want, need to do this for homework or something so um, this would enable the town you're going to see a bunch of trees laid down so it won't look the same as it does now and if for some reason the application is approved that it never goes forward there's no financing or something this would provide the town with the ability to go through and actually replant trees the same quality of trees that would ultimately when they're up top provide roosting for some of the endangered species which include the Indiana bat so thank you Mr. Zarin I'm trying to use this as an educational forum for our young people in the back um, and thank you, Mr. Sotero, for working hard on this while we were away. Uh, any comments, Ms. Franson? No. Ms. Moss? No. Mr. Sotero? Uh, no, we provided uh, uh, my comment letter. Any of the uh, minor comments are uh, included in uh, the resolution. And as you said before, that uh, <coughs> the letter 
um, signing off on $130,000 restoration bond. So I'm good. Thank you. And Ms. Potter, any comments? Um, we all pulled it together in the resolution, which has uh, several conditions. But I think we have something that works to protect uh, the property, and it allows the applicant to move forward with the tree felling. And thank you as well for all the many iterations today that I saw going back and forth. Can I just ask, um, did we, Rob, um, Rob had that had that comment about being able to access the property in case we had to enforce it or right. what, so was, is there is there something? Of, I'm sorry, I didn't. We there were several iterations today, as Mike pointed out. Um, right now, as drafted, it would require them to provide us with an, a limited access easement before the planning board considers the next uh, approval. Okay. Um, it's it would be an accommodation from the planning board not to require it right now because by the time we got it done, we would probably miss the tree felling window. Okay. Um, it does mean that if they don't come forward for approval in a few months, we don't have that easement. But you know, given their eagerness before the board, it's unlikely they will not continue okay. with approval. We're placing some trust in the applicants, which I believe we can do, having worked with them now for several years. That noted, and that doesn't mean things always take this long. We had COVID in, in, that intervened in between when this application was first made. Um, at, at the same time, we would have the ability to, to s somehow compel the CIA to do the actual work itself, I believe. Right, the site plan requires the applicant and owner to do the work. And so the access easement is a worst case scenario that if the town had to pull the bond, we needed the right to enter. But in the meantime, you could compel or try to compel the owner to undertake the restoration. Great, thank you. We start to my left, Mr. Reith, any comments? Uh, no, the resolution looks fine and no further comments. Thank you, Mr. Waters. No, no comments. Ms. Dexter? No comments. Mr. Oliver? Nothing additional to add. Mr. Garcia? None from me. Would anyone from the public like to speak about this application? There being none, um, may I get a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And Anne, if you don't feel like reading this resolution. I've got it. I've Chris, got my back right there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Resolution granting conditional site plan approval, phase one tree felling, CIA hotels and villas. Resolution number 2019-39F, whereas, 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 whereas. Now therefore be resolved that the planning board hereby grants conditional site plan approval to the phase one site plan and authorizes the chair or his authorized as a need to sign the phase one site plan after compliance with the following conditions. One, payment of all fees and escrow. Two, the phase one site plan set shall be renamed phase one site plan tree felling. Three, if a title sheet is provided, title sheet shall be renamed site plan phase one and the current index of drawing civil shall be replaced with the index of only the relevant plan sheets for the phase one site plan set. Four, revision of note two on sheet C300 to replace <coughs> town official with zoning administrator. Five, revision of note four on sheet C300 to change the wording substan substance construction to substantial constructions to change to the satisfaction of the town to <coughs> to the satisfaction of the town zoning administrator and to change planning board to the town board. Six, revision of sheet C300 to add note seven to state as follows. The tree stump shall be cut as low as possible to the ground and shall not exceed seven inches. Seven, revision of sheet C300 to revise detail one to remove the note lot line to be removed. Eight, revision of sheet C300 to revise detail two to remove the road layout and grading so that the existing conditions only are depicted. Nine, revision of sheet C300 to revise detail two to add a note to state as follows. Any felled trees in this area which are too large to be chipped shall be removed from the property. Any ground disturbance caused by this removal shall be limited to the minimum necessary and shall be covered by wood chips. 10, revision of sheet C300 to include note eight to read as follows. During tree felling, any invasive Japanese knotweed encountered shall be dug up, bagged, and appropriately removed from the site. Be a further result that the planning board hereby recommends that the town accept the performance guarantee for the restoration plan in the amount of $130,000 in form, substance, and manner of execution acceptable to the town board and its attorney. Be it further resolved that prior to the planning board considering granting conditional final approval to the logging, lodging facility project, the applicant shall 
provide the planning board with proof of recordation with the Dutchess County Clerk of a limited access easement in favor of the town in the event that restoration is required in form, substance, and manner of execution approved by the town board. Second. Any further discussion? I just want to point out that even though there's 10 conditions, which seems like a lot, they're all pretty minor, just changing names on sheets. that should be able to get signed, I hope, quickly. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. We'll Thank see you, you for Thank workshop you in just a bit. Thank you for everyone's hard work on this. Appreciate it. <laughs> Mr. Kaufman, come on up. The next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for I guess we're going to start calling it Crofton Music again because that's really what it's yeah, now been styled as. Yeah, Crofton. Yeah, Crofton. Is it back to Crofton. I thought it was I thought it was Carriage Trails. I changed it back. I thought to it was Crofton. Town Court. Town Court. Trail Court. Lou, you're Sorry. calling it Crofton Music again, right? You I dropped it was Carriage Trail. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so it was, it was Crofton Music originally, then it got changed by when Mr. John. <laughs> the attorney, I'm forgetting his name. John Riley. Riley. No, Riley. John Riley. They renamed it when they were trying to market it for different owners, and that's when it became. No, no, Carriage Trails could be any project. Any oh, not just Carriage Trails. Wait, country. not just Carriage Trails. <laughs> <laughs> it was Town Center. Often used. It was Crofton Town Center. Boulevard makes more sense. It was <laughs> Town Center. <laughs> it was with the old fashioned English Townie yes. and the yes. Central. Yes. Town Center. Town <laughs> Center. So we prefer going back to Crofton Muse. At any rate. Yes, it is. Uh, not make it a motion to reopen the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. So this application is to extend the site plan deadline. Uh, mm -hmm. Under our code, again, this is for a number of people in the audience, you have a year, once, once the site plan is signed, you have a year in which to start construction and two years in which to complete. This project is really, really, really old. It goes back <laughs> over 25 years. As it's, it's never been really fully started, uh, there has been some site work done, including installation of water lines, uh, roads roughed out, some early stormwater measures taken. But to that extent, every time that it kind of revives back up, it's actually been reduced in the original density that was approved. In the current iteration, um, Mr. Kaufman, the project sponsor, is seeking for us to extend the time in which they can uh, complete construction. However, while we're extending the approved plan, there have been changes to the approved plan required by seeker mitigation. Um, when this has got kind of got revved back up again, it went back to the Department of Environmental Conservation. There are more environmental studies done. The studies show that there were actually now the wetlands have migrated. There were wetlands that migrated into a northeast section of the property. There were housing and roads there. That's actually been also discovered to be prime blending turtle habitat, meaning it's good for uh, breeding, breeding grounds. So the DEC required the applicant to lose density in that area. So what we'd be approving ultimately will be the originally approved plan, but there'll be some new sheets put into it that will show what the mitigation requirements are by the DEC. <sighs> Just putting that in for the record. <laughs> that, <laughs> sorry, that noted, before the DEC and the other uh, agencies can start renewing uh, permits that were originally provided and lapsed or some that weren't pr necessarily provided, the planning board as lead agency must undertake a, seeking a seeker review. Because we had the new information about the Blanding's turtle uh, habitat as well as the changes to the wetland boundaries, we've done everything else, updated all the other portions of seeker. Bonnie, our consultant, is going to mention tonight some even further updates than what we have uh, already that we've all looked at and intend to adopt. And they're minor, but they're basically changes also led by the DEC, as it turns out. Um, but also, as part of this, when the original uh, Seeker was State Environmental Equality Review Act, when the original environmental impacts were looked at under Seeker by an, an earlier planning board, they didn't really look at all the aspects to an open span bridge that was just required, as we know now by DEC in the town. What's there right now is not an open span, so it restricts water flow. So what's called a HECRAS analysis was prepared by the applicant's engineers. Um, our engineering firm took a look at it several times. There was a back and forth. They're now satisfied that ultimately, once the bridge goes in, based on measures that are being taken, there won't be a water level rise uh, downstream or upstream that's permanent. There may be periodic inundation. We also have uh, letters from uh, the applicant's engineers noting that even in the area that it may rise by up to a foot, it's out of the actual turtle breeding ground specific area. It would just lap up to the edge of the boundaries. So 
all of us have been taking a very hard look at this tonight uh, as all along I believe we're prepared to take uh, action time on just the secret portion do you want to add anything to that no that was well, <laughs> well put <laughs> thank you Ms. Franson you have some comments but really updates for us and thank you for all that uh, yeah. work on the finding statement to update it because that's what we really need to do yes. yeah you're very Excellent. you're very welcome <coughs> um, I have a couple comments uh, and Lou provide us some insight and some suggested updates which I think are reasonable and appropriate on um, page 6 of 14 under 4 uh, it talks about the project has been modified in the course of the secret process to be serviced by centralized natural gas or electric so um, the applicant had mentioned that natural gas has been stubbed to the property but ultimately is working with the utility provider and ultimately will decide whether it's electric or natural grass, right. gas. And the, the critical point being that it will not be uh, petroleum tanks. It will not be oil tanks. <coughs> Thank you, Lou. And then on page 7 of 14, through additional conversations with New York State DEC um, regarding the turtle mitigation plan, the time period that's referenced in terms of managing the nesting area uh, was stated as being 12 years. That's what was on the plan. DEC responded and is requiring 20 years. So where it references um, in one of the, the third bullet on 7 of 14, 12 years, it's 20 years. And then there's just a minor change with regard to rototilling <coughs> that will be done biannually. So yeah. we'll include that. It's, it's on the plan, but I thought your finding statement should reflect it. And those were the changes. So otherwise, it's the same. And those particular changes with DEC are important because they're going to rely on this finding statement. And if they see that we put 12 and they wanted 20, you don't want to. There's a conflict. <laughs> you don't want to start come again. Right. Yes. So. And there's Lou again. <laughs> so when we read the resolution about the adopted finding statements, we'll make them with the proviso that they include the changes as just discussed. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions of Ms. Franson about the changes? Again, these were dictated by. Well. I should say these are dictated by your choice, whether it's going to be gas or electric, but it still will have the same net effect, and the rest are DTC oriented. Anything else, Bonnie? No, that's it. Thank you. Ms. Moss, any comments? Uh, yes. Uh, I just want to make sure that you understand <coughs> that in in Bonnie's analysis and in the in the no the statement the finding Finals. statement that the uh, special use permit is required it had expired and I don't believe that's been applied for yet uh, by you I have I thought I did but you may I'm have sure I couldn't find it if you find it send it to me well you know it's <laughs> the one with mold on it yeah <laughs> we're toast um, just as a reminder to the board while we were continuously extending this uh, back in the day Anna and I Chris um, we assumed that the special use permit was also being extended. So SUPs run with the <coughs> land, but they have to be, we'll call it activated or exercised because um, they never built the multiple family dwellings. It never was actually activated. But under the old code, under the current or the newer code, we'll still call it, um, multiple family, multiple dwellings also always require special use permits to look at the impacts on neighboring properties as opposed to under secret, the community-wide impacts. Um, and but back then the reason why we didn't know was because when the new code was adopted the planning board took over special use permits but back when this was originally granted it was done by the zoning board of appeals so we weren't really aware um, I should have thought about it because the zoning board of appeals wouldn't grant them anymore anyway we would have been doing them ourselves but at least we caught it finally uh, so we can make, take that as corrective action now and that's one of the reasons why we're confirming we're updating our secret findings but we're not extending it quite yet because we want to make sure we have the special use permit that's required before we could really uh, extend it so <coughs> Ms. Moss thank you Mrs. Dara. a couple things um, the last two things that were in, that were in our court before we could take uh, a secret action you are, you already mentioned the um, HECRAS analysis which is the floodplain uh, analysis that um, looks at the current light conditions with the four or five 72 inch culverts uh, what the elevations are now and then what the elevations of the Crum Elbow Creek will be after when they put the open span bridge in and Tad and I had a uh, and I think that 
you were on a call too. We had a call with uh, <coughs> the DEC uh, with their um, floodplain um, people, and the only time that either they would get involved or FEMA would get involved is if there was if the analysis showed something other than a no-rise condition. But the analysis after after a couple uh, back and forth between our office and Lou's consultant. Um, you know, the uh, analysis is uh, acceptable. We wrote uh, a letter to that effect. Uh, the town can't issue the actual floodplain permit yet because there's a section in our floodplain um, ordinance, floodplain permit ordinance that says uh, that other agency uh, approvals that, are, that uh, affect the stream have to be uh, obtained, which means the DEC permits. So the letter, uh, Lou can Lou can take that letter, give it to uh, the DEC. It'll show them that you know we're okay with the uh, analysis. We can't issue the permit yet, but that should be uh, enough to get him going through the process with them. And then the last thing was um, there was some some concern about the um, ability to uh, construct the open span bridge, maintain one lane of traffic. Uh, that would have to get back to the Moose Lodge, and then also uh, we were <coughs> we were concerned about making sure that they could do it because we didn't want any traffic. They um, they do have an emergency access from the back of the property that goes out to Drink Green Tree Park, and we wanted to make sure that they wouldn't come back later and say, "Hey, look, you know, we really." looked at this and we don't think we can keep like one lane of traffic open and you know we don't have enough like room blah 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 we want to use um, green tree park and we weren't you know, like in favor of that so hopefully to try to make a long story short we had uh, a conference call with Lou's um, contractor I was on a call Tad was on the call um, highway superintendent was on you know the call and their construction firm is uh, a big time uh, marine contracting firm and they fully like explained how they were going to go do it and they basically answered answer all all the questions that we had so uh, i believe i also put in my letter that we were comfortable with that so those were the last two issues on our end in terms of closing out you know the seeker so that's it for thank you our and um that the information you just referenced about the actual construction techniques for the bridge is also in the finding statement okay incorporated those as Good. well because that would be a seeker issue yep. and by the way thank you for uh, allowing the team to talk to him because he was I, I could tell by the way he wrote the email first that he was like wow this kind of was exciting to, <laughs> to hear how you're gonna do it also because yeah. it's specialized equipment that we well and it was it was it was it was funny because I uh, when after we had the call and uh, Gail and I were going down to our place uh, in Maryland we were on uh, we were on I don't know US 1 like in Delaware <laughs> and they had the same type like of crane that these guys were like explaining to us I mean oh. not the same like firm but the same type like of crane that was putting in the overhead so you could see it in over, you know like a bridge so I'm like okay Gail quick you gotta go take pictures <laughs> of that crane. so she snapped a bunch of pictures of the crane I said I sent him to Tad and you know Howie so proof that too many years doing this work makes you a land use junkie when you're even when you're traveling well, it was hard. It was hard to not notice this huge <laughs> crane right next to me. I mean, it was like. Can you send us anyways. pictures? Huh? Can you send us the pictures so uh, we can sure. see what it looks like? Yeah. Great. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Ms. Paul, do you have any comments? When we <coughs> either receive the special use permit application or locate it, the board will need to set a public hearing on it, and we can do it so that it runs with public hearing on this extension request. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, let me start to my right. Um, any comments, Mr. Garcia? Uh, no comment. Mr. Oliver? No comment. Ms. Dexter? Um, I, no comment, but I did enjoy the um, all the data that you were talking about, about how to do that bridge. I was wondering how it was going to be done, and it was a, a great explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Now, for the audience, the existing bridge there now, which does need to be replaced, um, that also, in addition to accessing the site, and the housing that the applicants were proposing, it also is the only site in and out of the Moose Club. And the original project sponsors or owners of this who applied to the town uh, made an agreement that there would <coughs> always be one lane open on the bridge so the Moose Club could access its uh, site. 
and our question was could that really be done given what we normally knew about how bridges are constructed so you're right and it was fun to read <coughs> Rob any comments no just I'm glad it's moving forward mr. V <laughs> no comments would anyone from the public like to speak about this application there being none <coughs> uh, mr. chairman just yes. a couple of points for you uh, we met with the uh, the the moose lodgers and um, the loyal order of the moose uh, right multiple it's also men of the moose because there's no women actually in the no, moose club there was a woman there no they're women of the moose they're not in the club I used to belong that's why I know whatever you say <laughs> <laughs> anyhow so you know and we, we we went through how we plan on doing it and how we, we can in fact leave a, a lane open you know as awkward as that sounds, it'll be done and, you know, emergency can get through and everything. We did suggest to them that they might consider having for up to three months, because it would probably be closer to two months if we didn't have to, you know, do the the one lane it's open at a time. the construction time. Right, right. but I mean, we think, uh, we've been told about three months is uh, with the current state, they would, you know, if they had an alternate site for all their playing and bingoing and things of that nature, and so they're going to take it under consideration. <coughs> they didn't sound too enthused, though. So, you know, at, at the moment, we're ready to do what we have to do as the plan is. If, if it be, you know, if they are willing to, you know, uh, uh, let us get it done quicker, great. I would let the board know, obviously, as well as the engineers, so we could, you know, do it, uh, put the bridge in in a more standard form. So, uh, um, in any event, so that's that. Um, uh, uh, I thank you for the letter also. Uh, with the uh, findings and the floodplain development permit, which uh, the letter indicates would be issued, but for DEC's permits, um, we, you know, we, you, I think we've checked the boxes that township had to provide us in order for us to get those DEC permits, you know, as a condition precedent. So thank you all for that. And uh, have, you heard anything that back well from the, have you heard anything back from the DOT on the options you sent after, um, after I sent them that email to hopefully nudge them? Right. Back. So what happened is, you know, so of course on every, on an alternate day basis, uh, I, uh, you know, want to get a hold of them and now I'm told by my by VHP you know if you ask him too much that works against you you know and I'm like uh, nah. okay so uh, I went there today to knock on their door that always is a big hit and um, I thought an appointment uh, yeah and uh, oops that's what they said yeah no they said oh they're not available I said I was not surprised at that but uh, if they get the sense that they're being stalked, they're correct. So uh, <laughs> um, we will, you know, I keep trying. I'll I, nudge them uh, again. Nudge them again, you know. <laughs> and the critical be thing being, don't move the edge of pavement on the western. Uh, I mean, all lane. really, all, I mean, all you're looking to find out is it's road option width. One, option one, it's two, lane two. width. It's just it's different lane really widths. Those are the options. Yeah, yeah, if you don't move the edge of pavement on the western side, which would eliminate any issue that DEC might have. Uh, then the question is, is how wide do you want those lanes? And if you put them at a minimal amount, then the other side doesn't get extended too badly either. As a matter of fact, if it was a minimal, to me minimal, 10 foot wide lanes, you would almost not have any change in the width of the entire roadway. Because right now you have six foot shoulders and you know, two 11 foot lanes, comes out to the same 30 feet. However, uh, we'll find out. <coughs> Let me see if I can nudge him again because yeah. I have to talk to him about something else. Uh, anyway. I was just going to so say, do we, should, would it be helpful if <coughs> you and I attended a meeting again? That's how we moved well, the I mean, uh, it's hotel really, CIA I mean, all it is is just like you just said. It's okay, you want 10 foot lanes, 10 and a half, 11. I, but I feel what as though if the phone calls were falling on deaf ears. No one's actually going over and looking and saying, let's pick you know, any mini my mo. It sometimes helps if the town is there for it. Well, yeah. just to, well, let's see. I mean, they, I you know, I got a reaction back that they had to check with their real estate uh, department and oh. uh, see where the size of the right of way was. Okay. And they said, could you have our surveyor send you send us the right of way? Oh, so they want to double check the right. Of okay. Pointed so. out that we okay. got the right of way in uh, with from you, but we sent it to them anyway. They right. actually. So let's see what happens in like a week, maybe. All right. Chris and I both worked with DOT as part of another volunteer organization about doing some tr street tree plantings, and we discovered quickly that they don't have records of where all the right of w rights of way are no. per property. Wow. 
Well, they've exercised some over the years, but and they haven't updated the inventory, so to speak. So they actually rely now on applicants, which is a little crazy, but at any That's rate. why we said the right of way extends right through the middle of that house. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not they accept that. Yeah. <laughs> now, look, it's really as simple. You, you pointed it out. It's a, you know, 10, 10 and a half, 11. Pick. I read the options. Then I know, That's I know but yeah. whatever you do, don't touch the western side. And the eastern side, the reason I, why the worry is there is because you'd be encroaching into that gentleman's already not very big, or that gentleman, that family is not very big front lawn. No. Um, so when do we want to adjourn this public hearing to? If we, don't, if we have a special use permit, we could extend it, we could adjourn it to the 20th and have time to set a public hearing in advance at the first March meeting? Or we could adjourn this to April, end of April and <coughs> set the public hearing at the next meeting also. That. I mean, we're I mean, we're just going to get. I think you you just uh, sent in a, a link or something. Yeah. Was it yesterday? And I'm going to get the hard. I'm going to get yeah, some I, plans printed. So I mean, probably a couple months now. I mean. Well, of course, March 20th uh, uh, appeals to me, but I might be dreaming. So. I Is mean, this for the this so is this for the extension of the site plan and oh. the special. Oh, and use it'll permit. be also be a new public. The well, extension the of the we're not special really use permit, not. It's it's it'll be a new hard. special use oh, permit. Oh, that's a new thing? Unless you did the application. So he can't get a special use permit until he gets... No, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I forget I know, about it. I think we're going to have an internal discussion about the yeah, special use permit. Right. May I suggest that you put it off to the 20th, we? and if we don't make the 20th, <laughs> you can make an announcement at that meeting. Well, they still have to open and close, but that's what they're going to do. That's okay. Looking at me? I'm going to get all the consultants. Oh. <laughs> so you want more time to March 3rd? Well, the March 3rd? I mean, March 20th. 20th. Sorry. Well, the point is, if you continue to March 20th, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Make it a motion to adjourn the public hearing to March 20th. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And Mr. Veith, you have the resolution to adopt the amended secret findings. I do. Resolution adopting amended secret findings, Croft and Muse. Dated February 21st, 2024. Whereas, 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 whereas. Now there uh, be it resolved that the planning board hereby, number one, accept and adopts the attached amend, amended finding statement as lead agency for the seeker review of the Croft and Muse project and authorizes and directs the planning board chairperson to execute amend and said amended finding statement on behalf of the planning board. Number two, authorizes and directs the planning board secretary to file and circulate the finding statement together with this resolution in accordance with 6 NYCRR 617-12 of the seeker regu uh, regulations. Second. Thank you, John. Just to note real quickly that uh, to add and for the record that we are adopting a, the amended finding statement as revised this evening uh, by Ms. Franson. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? The motion carries unanimously. Okay, one more step. Close. There you go. Thank you, Lou. We're going to build this project. I know. I guarantee you. <laughs> I know. Thank you. You started when Maybe I was. Not in my lifetime, but we're going <laughs> to. You started when I was chairman of the planning board, and that was how many years ago, Michael? 2019. 19. <laughs> this young man looking to observe is going to think that all the projects take forever to do this. <laughs> um, the next item on the agenda is a workshop, so there's no more public hearing. <coughs> this is hoteling lot line alteration. This is an application, I believe, or a discussion for a minor subdivision lot line alteration. Uh, this ties in with the next item on the agenda, which is Al's Yard and Salvage, or Al's Salvage and Auto. Uh, we received this application back, I think, in April 6th of last year. Um, it, there were lots of information that was missing. In the interim, the applicants have gone to the Zoning Board of Appeals because of some var uh, area variance was required. If I understand this correctly, the Zoning Board of Appeals suggested that you undertake the lot line revision so that there'll be less of variances to give. Yes, right? that is correct. Okay, let me turn it over to you. I'm sorry. I'm turning it over to you. Okay, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, good evening. My name is Marie Welch from Welch Surveying. On my left is Tom Cummings. On my right is 
I'll hold that one. <laughs> um, Lisa, we're supposed to be here. I talked to Tom yesterday. I talked to, I stopped at Al's garage on Friday, so um, they did know about the meeting. I don't know why they're not here. Um, so yes. We'll um, pretend they're here in spirit. <laughs> Casper. So the lot line alteration is taking place on a division line between two lots that Mr. Hotelling owns. Um, at one time, if you excuse me, if you've looked at the plan, I have an existing conditions uh, sketch up in the upper left-hand corner shows how it is right now, and then I have tried to uh, show what is going to be with the change into the uh, by changing the lot line. The current existing one-story frame dwelling is, I believe, it's 9.6. I knew it. One other thing I needed to get. Okay, um, I'm sorry, it's eight, eight feet. So the um, existing conditions, uh, the existing house, the closest corner is eight feet from the property line. The metal building that has been there uh, for quite some time is seven feet. And then there are two containers which are actually movable and the carport, which at the time we did the site plan drawing, the carport extended over the property line. And Mr. Hotelling was asked to rectify that situation um, by cutting off the end of the carport which he has done and so what our proposal will do is uh, a minimum of 10 feet from each of the uh, structures so that um, the actual the one-story frame dwelling will be slightly more than what it is currently and uh, so we would he would then be able to go back to the zoning board for 10 foot variance or foot variance of 10 feet from uh, it's not 10 feet from the code, but uh, that would uh, come down to a 10 foot variance. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, and the reason why I say that is the uh, survey doesn't seem to show what we see when we go to the site. I was there myself, so I'm not sure what you're missing. Where's the roundabout thing for the horses that go around? around? Well, that's not permanent. On a survey, I generally show only permanent structures. Uh, that's a fence. It's a use. Area. It's a use. All uses must be shown on the site. I assumed it was his for, for his children to ride their horses. It's a use on the site that we should know. About. The site plan that came in, the old original one, mm -hmm. showed cars being parked there. Okay. Well, <coughs> there were no cars today. I was there with inside the fenced in area. I can certainly go back and locate the fence. As I say, I assumed it was. I know his daughter has horses and she rides them um, I just I've never been asked to locate a movable fence I guess and because you could pick it up and move it at any you know I mean it would be struck uh, I'm gonna turn it over to the consultants yes Ms. Moss. Um, I was just going to clarify that I believe uh, I'm Sorry. Um, I think I think the confusion is that there are two things that the planning board is considering one is the site plan and one is the survey. Thank you. And I think <coughs> that from your perspective, what you're talking about is what's required on a survey as opposed to a site plan. That's what I was thinking. So I think that maybe this is the beginning of what needs to be on the site plan, and perhaps the pool and maybe the... Um, well, the pool. pool sure. oh, the pool is there? Okay. Here, yeah. okay. I, I mean, I, I, we do have a pending site plan, but things like um, all the things on the lot to the north, need to be shown the drive the driveway structures anytime you change a lot line we need to make <coughs> sure that we're not creating additional nonconformities on the lot that we're taking the land from so we need to know what's there okay well I did show the driveway in the vicinity of the lot line change and that's really the only thing I mean it doesn't go I didn't have enough sight just you know distance to see all the way down but it, it did show that the existing driveway was there um, those culvert pipes extend a little arc farther they were you know again off the property so I didn't show them but I can I can make those changes and then you know where's the well for each property where's the septic because we want to make sure there's no encroachment or anything um, that we don't yeah. by well, lot line. I mean if you look at the size of the lot line change we're going from eight feet from a building to ten feet from a building it would you know I can I can confirm I, that they're not in there but I get it I, it's, 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 it's such a minor nature I didn't think that that would be the, the problem specifically with the site yeah. is there's a pending site plan application which shows that there's a lot of um, issues with 
uh, zoning compliance. Mm -hmm. And so the other question is, is this lot line really going to fix any problems when there are lots of other zoning compliance issues? So they want to make sure they're not making, okay. you know, but you've, one you've problem. You've got a, a lot of 2.08 acres are tanking down to 2.06. Mm -hmm. If you went down to anything less than that, you would make a non-conforming lot. It has to be a minimum of two acres, my understanding, from the zoning enforcement officer. That is true. So it's, it's as I say, we're, we're just basically giving, you know, this is because the zoning board has asked him to do this. Um, and we're just, you know, doing it in a way that seemed to make the most sense by, you know, giving them a, a number that they could say, okay, this is the variance we'll grant you. Um, gives them a little more space to work with. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, the parcel A is 0 0.02 acres. We're, we're certainly not, and there's no, you know, I, again, you can't tell because you haven't been there or haven't at least looked at it in that determination. But I can I can add the driveway. I can add the, the wells and septics. Yeah, approximate. Um, I mean, you're not going to, well, you know, like the yeah. wells, like you might be you might be able to well, see he, I'll have to have the applicant show me because I, I will, you know, the wells, I mean, back they then, approximate. they probably did them underground. Now, do they need all... Uh, do they need to have all of you know the structures on the two point the two point uh, lot lot number two, or just like within? Well, so we the the problem is we need it for the site plan. Right. <laughs> but so. but again, would you need the stuff on the other lot for the site plan? Yes. Because he's not is he doing a site plan on that lot? Because I wasn't. That's so just, let me just be candid here. <laughs> Things were done without approval by the planning board or the building department because he has multiple violations. Mm -hmm. I wasn't very kind to the person who should be sitting to your left last time because he didn't have much information on there. What he had didn't seem to be accurate as to what was really there. It existed. So I'm not going to say that this is what's happening, but it appears to be that both lots are being used for the auto salvage and sales. Both lots. Mm -hmm. oh. I can t there's lots and lots of aerial photography that you can see that there's lots and lots of vehicles over on both sites. So. That's the reason why if he's going to get an approval for the unapproved structures, et cetera, then we need to know what's on both sites. We need to understand the sites if it's being used as a single continuous site. That's basically it. Okay. So, and as I said, I can show you, I just unfolded the map, I believe others did well, as I've, well. I've looked at the aerials. I've no, no, but with the map, with the first site plan the that Tom uh, proposed to us right. sort of had higgledy piggledy cars everywhere, but they he didn't show the pool, and I said, yeah, there's a pool right there. So I applaud the fact that there's more information, but we probably need a little bit more on the other parcel um, to do this. And this is an application. This isn't actually a pre-app before the board. This was actually paid for already, Tad? I wish we had an, a pre-app meeting on this to, to just with maybe some planning board members. But um, OK, so the request isn't just for the variance. We need some more information on the other lot to make sure that we're not encumbering or doing something wrong. Um, obviously, it appears as though that the driveway that you're showing, this labeled McAdam driveway, is being used by both sites, too, to enter and exit. Um, well, he, he owns both lots. I mean, if no I offense, lots that that No offense, it doesn't matter because he can sell each one individually. And anyone who would buy it would know that that condition existed. Yep, um, it, which would then he would still have to provide some sort of easement in the future. Uh, but at any rate, or we could put a fence, a gate up, and not allow anybody to go through. Could do that too, um, depending on who, who, what the neighbor relations are. So let me start over to Bonnie. Do you have escrow for this? No, not no. For the okay, um, Ms. Moss, do you have any comments to add? No. Mr. Sotero, any comments? No, no, nothing other than what you know you've already mentioned. Ms. Paldo, any additional? I mean, these are not my comments, but they did come up during the meeting, so. I will just relay that there was a question about the stream being piped under the junkyard. I think it's shown it's shown, yeah. As a stream and then the question was just whether, you know, when it's piped it was permitted. I don't know if you have a if he has a permit for that. I would have no way of knowing that. That's long before I was out there doing the site doing the survey. Well I can tell you that the I got I gotta I got think about this. So the thirty six inch culverts that are on lot number two that that area had a, a blowout that was during uh, 2010 um, Irene, Irene yeah. 
and that whole that whole road you know, was <coughs> closed and the town had to replace we've got a culvert that's just a couple hundred feet further up and we had to replace the culvert at the same time his uh, driveway had washed out so um, Tommy Gleason I think just I think he just put those culverts in then at that time so I mean I don't know that there was a permit because it's on private you know, property I don't think there has to be a permit the site is constrained according to the environmental <coughs> mapper by blending's turtles <coughs> just letting you know um, when, when Tom was here uh, they did not provide that information because they didn't use the environmental mapper when he filled out the original EAF if you look at the EAF here it shows it even though I'm not because it's already disturbed I'm not sure that any blending turtles going to be using the site which you made it even more even less usable by well, channelizing not, the water not, not yeah <laughs> they'd be dead <laughs> <laughs> at any rate um, can you continue on, Ms. Polidoro, any other comments? So just um, the zoning tables, it would be helpful to have one for each of the lots, what the, you know, what the requirement is, what the precondition is, what the postcondition is for both lots. You, you sort of have the achieved after the fact, but it would be good to see what it is before, what it is after for both. Anything else? That's it. Let me start, while we still have Ms. Dexter, let me start with my inner right. <laughs> and oh, I guess we just one yes. other question. Because this is part of a larger, a larger site plan, I would want, I guess we could call it type two as just a lot line change and segment it from the review of the full plan. I just was but commenting on this to, uh, I don't know how to, to Ms. Whitman that I didn't think we, we should, I didn't think we should bifurcate seeker on this. So then because the, 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 the lot line alteration is only being done because of the site plan requirements. So then we're, we're in a catch 22 where you need the full site plan before you at the same time that the lot lines before you at the same time that they're doing the variance, which is probably the most efficient way to get mm -hmm. through the process but the applicant needs to understand that everyone's going to have to keep moving all the pieces forward because the board's going to have to complete secret in other words we could hold a public hearing you can even a joint public hearing on the uh, subdivision as well as the site plan mm -hmm. we could close it on the subdivision as we move forward if we thought that was valid so it could still that portion could move forward allowing the zba to act at some point we could complete secret at some point before it's ready for approval but Yep. Right. In the absence of segmentation, you have to consider it one big piece of land. I don't see how you s do it otherwise, because there'd be no reason for them to propose this, as you should. Ms. Welsh just pointed out, it's teeny that you're moving it in relation to both sizes of the lots. It, mm -hmm. That would be my question. It's like the zoning, we can't, we can't get the zoning board approval until we get the lot line approval. I know. That's why I was yeah. just saying it's a catch-22, but yeah. I think... The site plan has to proceed along with the subdivision. Okay. Well, uh, my understanding was it was going on, on tonight as well, but uh, as you can see, the the other party, you know, I can't speak to the site no, plan. Right. I didn't work yeah. on that. No, right. But I can, uh, <coughs> I mean, I did. I gave, well, I, if he's submitted a new one, the one he's, he submitted to you was not from my drawing. No, he's not submitted a new one, I assure you. Okay. Well, that's why I say I, I have provided him with the updated drawing, so he should have revised his site plan to address these comments. I mean, I'll have to give them another one with the other location that we have to do. But um, in the meantime, um, you know, li like I said, once he took the carport end off and there was no more violation over the property line, I wasn't sure why the, ver the zoning board couldn't proceed with a variance without the lot line change. Unless it's just that, you know, they felt that this needed to I didn't attend the zoning board meeting, so I don't know what their reasoning was. We won't either. We don't either. <laughs> I don't um, believe Ms. I, I think I'm supposed to inspect uh, each site that has a license every year. And two years, three years ago, I observed illegal construction with an extension of that block building mm -hmm. and told him he needed to come in for approval. He didn't. The next year, it was closed in it was completed so in order to remedy went out and that's why he's here okay comments on the lot line in terms of it's hard to sort of analyze this out of context it, it, it is very hard to analyze it but it, but what it is telling me is that for a um, Remember when we had to do this for what? What's the uh, 
the Pauling Health Banner, all of the violations and everything oh, that were there. Belvedere back then. Yes, yeah. back then. That we're we're trying to make steps to remedy and and set right everything, and it's go it takes a while, um, and there is some back and forth, but I feel that we're starting to isolate and 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 get these identified as we couldn't even identify the last time it, it just seemed everything was wrong <laughs> so I we're getting a little closer so just it, it's going to take patience good comment mr. Oliver any comments I would echo Ann's uh, comments and say you know this is going to be a little bit of a complicated process as we you know move forward um, but thank you for the uh, new survey and you know that will definitely provide some information to help us okay. go in the right direction okay thank you mr. You're Garcia oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just say ditto <laughs> yeah, I'm not I have no comment I mean it's it seems like you're he's all over the place <laughs> Well, that's a good description that's yeah. a good comment don't <laughs> worry so thank you mr. waters well I think the chairman did a good summary of what's going on and the attorney filled in some pieces and overall I just it just I guess more work needs to be done I <laughs> echo what Ann had said so tactfully <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's mr. V um, at the agenda meeting, we had one question about the property to the south. There's a yeah. horse barn with a little lean to yeah. uh, right down, little, yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that still there? Yes. It yeah. was when I was out there in whatever the date of the survey was, January of last year. No, Jan January. Well, we were out there earlier than October or whatever. Right. And the same property owner owns that, correct? Yes. So maybe there's a little problem with that. Should be, um, uh, and again, that's like there's a a truck container is mm. is it because it's too close to a property line is that mm -hmm. yeah um, okay because um, so he uses that for like his tack and his hay for yeah. his horses who go in the shed right right but he, he okay. probably you'll have to just move it you have to get the lot line from tad what it's supposed to be and that lot would come into conformity in other words it's kind of the well well west or the well well east as we call it up here um, so to give you direction as well oh yes and I'm not how sure how far we're going to take this but there's no permission for animal husbandry or site plan for animal husbandry on any of those properties uh, this is the reason why I asked for the horse areas to be shown that we already have the, the where the tack is kept and you can't park cars where the horses are being moved etc so <coughs> That's what I was trying to say. There's, this is a big Pandora's box. You open it up, there's lots of things flying out. Um, we're going to try to let them fly out in a reasonable way so that we can handle each time. Uh, but again, this is inextricably linked to a site plan. So I think you can keep it as is, just showing the uses you have for in terms of the lot lines alteration. But we need to have the information on the, the adjoining lot. But we all should, should have a real site plan, a, a new site plan submitted so we can an understand what all the moving parts are. And I'm certainly not trying to dump on you um, because the applicant should be here, or the actual owner should be here too, so he can help us understand all of what's going, all those moving parts that are there. Um, because the engineer who represented before didn't have the answers either. Uh, and I'm not even sure he'd been out there to see everything because when I said no, I, I believe he was out there because he had measurements that he was going to give me for the buildings I said no I have to go out and shoot them myself you know in order for me to sign the map I've got to actually locate them then there's a reason why the steam came to my ears last time and my head turned around five times before it spewed vomit <laughs> <laughs> because I wasn't being told the truth so he claimed he didn't know what the horse thing was I'm like it's right here on the aerial so at any rate um, can you go back and speak with your applicants and the other consultant mr. Tom mm -hmm. um, and to, to explain to them we need to have a new updated site plan and this and we can proceed with them together it doesn't mean that we can't take action first on the subdivision uh, we just have to do seeker on the entire side <coughs> and that means that Ms. Moss may have to address the animal husbandry issue I'm just saying if you look at the entire lots together the, the reason I'm questioning this is I'm not trying to say he has to do this with his property 
because everybody has certain property rights, but your property rights don't extend around your neighbors as well. And I can appreciate that with three lots that he wants to do lots of different things. And if you look at the lots as if there are no lot lines, there's probably enough acreage there for however many horses they have. But there's a requirement, as you know, under husbandry, it's based on the weight of the average weight of the horse for 2.5 acres, I think, per so many pounds. See, I don't know the laws for animal husbandry. I'd it's from sitting up here <coughs> so long, I just don't remember the actual requirements because we haven't had a lot of it. But it is based, and we have to, ref actually, we re usually refer this to Cornell for their opinion on the animal husband husbandry application um, because the state has invested interest in this as well. I mean, they want to, they actually want to see more agricultural uses like uh, animal husbandry. But I don't think that given the size of a lot that there's going to be a way for us to prove it unless there's a different kind of lot, lot, lot line alteration made is what I'm trying to say. So here's what I would say. If you would like, um, most of the people that are left in here, applicants can tell you that we do what are called offline meetings. Mm -hmm. So it's like a pre-app, me uh, it's a meeting where we can discuss. There's not quorum of the planning board and no decisions are made, but it's a way to provide direction to tell you what next steps need to be done. In other words, what I'm saying up here would be probably better detailed in a meeting that we would have in this room with Tad, uh, maybe one of the consultants, but certainly uh, Ms. Paul Doro, our attorney to move forward. So I'm just offering that uh, as a, uh, the next step, or you're free to have the applicants just submit the next things as well. But I'd like to talk to them first so we can make sure we understand what all right. should be shown on it. This isn't a very pleasant thing for you, I apologize. but. When I saw this, I was like, oh, no, it's come back. <laughs> so, I mean, we want to clean well, this up. I mean, he's, he wanted to address the violation. So, we, you know, uh, again, the zoning board kind of said to him, you know, come back with a lot line change so that you can address a variance, you know, and that, to me, was the reason for coming here was for the lot line change. It is, uh, but, again, because there's a, a, a site plan. Yeah, right. but I wasn't involved they don't, in and the They site don't plan. know the site plan is even before us, I don't believe, because it, well, they do because it was referred to them for the variances in the first place. What am I saying? But that's not the final site plan we're going to see because it didn't show. In other words, if they, if the ZBH saw the site plan we had, we can't approve it. There's <laughs> things on top of things that aren't there. It's unapprovable. So it would be better if that had been sent. If it had been a newer site plan, more updated, that would have been sent to the ZBA. And as always, I'm not trying to criticize our our sister board, but. If they just tell you that and you spend the money to make it, it's better to have a pre-app meeting with us. It's free. There's no charge for it, and we can give you some better guidance like we've been given tonight. So but in an offline meeting, we can at least say, does this look like a better way to solve all the problems that are there? Or would it be better to maybe dissolve one lot line? Whatever. We, 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 these are all just options that we can discuss. Okay. We well, do want to work with the owner. And I think you can't dissolve one of the lot lines because you've got residences on each of these parcels. You know, so you you would wind up with two residences on one parcel. Do, do you, you're allowed two single-family yes. houses if you have enough, if you have the proper density, which this has. Okay. So yeah. But we again, you know, the two and a half acres or two acres, I, 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 you're not going to get two acres <coughs> on the, the southern lot. So. I'm just letting you know in terms yeah. of what might need to be done. Can right. it, again, this is tied to a site plan. The mm -hmm. site plan we have to approve has all the uses that are on it, unless he's willing to get rid of some uses. The horse thing is an issue because he's going to have to have an animal hu husbandry approval as well. Okay. Assuming that the horses are kept there and not. Uh, even though it's on a different lot than what's before the board tonight. Let me just put it this way. That's not my, that would be uh, up to Ms. Moss and the ZBA to ultimately determine mm -hmm. for that determination. But if I thought the, the ring was on the lot. The ring is on this lot. lot. So in other words, I didn't hear you, Victoria. Oh, I was saying the ring is on the subject. Right. Lot. But, the, but yeah. the animal husbandry, the, which would I assume is the barn with the horses in it. It's not the whole the whole thing. The whole thing is animal husbandry that's because that's size. right. That's how they're exercising the horses as well. So it's all part of the same use. So, but we'll work this through in an offline meeting first. So that will make it easier for when you're up here before the board to proceed more smoothly ahead of time. So, okay. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you for presenting this. And we'll be back in touch. Okay. The next item on the agenda is back to the Hotel and Villas project, uh, the lodging facility project as it was referred to, on um, property owned by the Culinary Institute. Um, this discussion is going to center on the new architectural elevations we were seeing, and they also prov applicants also provide us with a full lighting plan as opposed to kind of a partial. Let's come on up. This is a workshop. 
Thank you for waiting patiently. No, no problem. Um, just a clarification. Um, <coughs> you might want to pull the microphone closer. I'm not sure. Sorry. It's picking you up. Thank you. <coughs> we weren't necessarily expecting to discuss the lighting plan today. We had <coughs> we submitted it in response to the county comments, and I think some comments from. Michael, I think your comments. Which is, it, it, that's it, I, I put that in there in case it's brought up tonight. Okay, so staff has as well. gone through it. Uh, the primary primary issue we did want to talk about because there's, there's been several discussions as we now enter what I hope is the sort of final phase on the conditional site plan. There have been several discussions going on on the architectural, and I don't think the full board yet has had. The, the benefit of that exchange, nor have we heard from the full board on, on your comments on, <coughs> in particular, <coughs> I think one of the main issues being the, the roof, the roof designs. Um, you probably have had an opportunity to read our cover letter and the Gensler attachment discussing some of the discussions and some of the rationale for what we've submitted, including you know, we trying to integrate the Greenway standards, the St. Andrew district standards, and the general code, you know, development standards. Uh, and they sort of overlap and, and sort of complement each other and, and alike. So I'm going to turn it over to, to Michael and, um, you know, look forward to a, a good, good, robust discussion. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity. It's been it's been great working uh, with all of you. Uh, we had a, a really nice set of conversations. Rob and I have have gotten close, and uh, I, I think I think he could actually work at Gensler because he can spend my clients' money just like <laughs> I can. So this is this is good. Sorry, Lou. I'm sorry to start like that. Um, Lou's getting beat red just so right now. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I think they're both are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, Rob, Rob's made some great. He's made some great recommendations that we've we've taken to heart, and um, uh, we had a we had a, a robust conversation. And Michael, thank you for joining that with Stephanie and uh, for everybody else. I want to just kind of talk a little bit about what we had talked about there and and where this is going, and and we feel like um, you know we're we're creating an architectural language here. Um, that is in, in keeping with the Hudson Valley, but it, it's creating something unique and different, and I think that's an important part uh, of this as well. Um, so I, last time I had the opportunity to meet with this, this group, um, I, I basically just said, look, when we, when we have a project in, in, in an iconic uh, location like this, you know, there's, there's a couple ways we could go about that. One, one would be to go the traditional route, and you know, a, a quick search, and I'm just going to flip through some uh, some pages I put together here today. You know, a quick search of traditional architecture in the Hudson Valley, you get a lot of this. You get a lot of the Dutch colonial. You get a lot of the old uh, uh, details that you find uh, all all around, and it's that that's one way that we could certainly uh, approach a project like this. Another way would be to look at the iconic buildings in this area. You've got the Roosevelt, you've got the CIA, you've got the traditional old uh, iconic architecture that you'll find here. The third way would be uh, more of a contemporary or modern take, and there are a lot of examples of that around here as well. And in those, we do see flat roofs, we see lots of different types of, of building, ty uh, building types and massing, um, and obviously based on what we've created, um, we're kind of in between, I think, here uh, uh, in our in our development. And I'm going to jump to the roof um, narrative uh, diagram that we put together at your request. And I'm actually glad we did this because it did it did show us something. It's interesting, you know, when you draw the line uh, here. Uh, unfortunately, north is to the right, Architecture 101, sorry about that, but here it, it makes sense. The Hudson River is to, uh, to the, nor uh, to the uh, page north here. So on the west side uh, of the site, you can kind of see we've compartmentalized uh, what we see as, um, as the more public um, activity-driven buildings on that side. And in brown, you see all sloped roofing. Um, you also see uh, green roofs uh, on that side of the, uh, that side of the site as well. So 
um, where the where the public is going to have the most uh, in, in, you know involvement in, in being uh, part of the, the buildings and, and renting uh, the hotels the hotel rooms in that section uh, we are doing the more the sl uh, sloped roofs and I can kind of go through some of the renderings there and show you that um, and then on the east side is the leasehold villa uh, product here uh, which are the two bedroom three bedroom and four bedroom uh, villas uh, on the lower part and you know it's interesting when I show you some of these renderings uh, you know for us when we read through the the letters of the St. Andrews district and, and the Greenway you know they talk about a unified architecture in in a neighborhood um, we feel like certainly here we we don't have any adjacent buildings uh, you know on this site it's an isolated site you have to come off of route 9 you have to go over the berm you have to go through the woods to actually see this so we're kind of isolated in that respect not to say that we don't want to respect uh, you know all the uh, all the architecture uh, he, uh, you know in the in the neighborhoods or the uh, surrounding neighborhoods but we we feel we've created an architecture here that that can stand on its own and at the same time respect uh, uh, respect that so um, I wanted to show you here, this is an interesting uh, uh, piece as well. Rob br brought up some of his other concerns. He talked a little bit about the uh, utility building and he thought the importance of the heritage el elements that we had uh, introduced a long time ago uh, was something that needed to remain consistent. And uh, you'll see as you look through the elevations we've sent you now, the keyed in elevations, <coughs> there's a there's a strong consistency in the materiality of the, of the stone walls, the heritage walls that you find just about in every building. Um, you can kind of see this uh, dry stack granite. Uh, not a lot of mortar going to be kind of fit together. We're hoping to find some of this product on site and actually use it. Um, you can kind of see another version of that also using the granite but in a gabion style. Um, and then for our chimneys, uh, a, a dry stack granite with a tighter, with a tighter uh, 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 joint in between. So I'll just kind of zoom in here. You can kind of see AST01 on this building. These are all different buildings in the package we sent you. AST01 repeats itself there and AST01 here. So uh, Rob, to kind of answer that direct question that you had, um, we've accommodated that on, on the majority, if not all of the buildings. Um, this last page, I think, is something that uh, we want to show you, um, Michael and, and Rob, you had the opportunity to see this. Um, as part of the package, the marketing package that um, our client is putting together, and I think it's an important, I think it's an important image because um, when we start to look at, at these, as opposed to what we've put together for the architectural site plans, which we're, these are these are nice renderings, but they aren't the um, you know the romantic uh, renderings that we're putting together for what what we feel this is this site is is going to look like and I call attention specifically to this to this rendering because you know as we look at this and we're able to have some poetic license and when we when we do a rendering like this um, it does show you that it, it exactly what we're looking for as it relates to the look and feel I've drawn this red line up here because for us as we studied the massing of the buildings throughout the site you know the most important thing here was the uh, keeping, making sure that we're exposing as much of the natural elements around our building as, as possible. Um, and you can kind of see if we started to introduce sloping roofs, large uh, roof systems, um, it would be taking away from that for, uh, in, in, our, in our view. We also, f we also uh, Chris uh, Lapine brought up a really great point uh, that I hadn't put in the, in the uh, narrative that I sent you. Um, <laughs> on the, uh, the LEED certification side. You know, when we, when we do introduce uh, sloping roofs, it does introduce more volume in the building, um, and we're going to be heating and cooling and, and removing air from the attic spaces. So there's another benefit uh, as we do our calculations in meeting LEED certification. Um, <coughs> it, it's, a, it's a huge element when you multiply that by the number of buildings on the site. Um, so to kind of work our way around this, this diagram, you're going to see Hopefully it'll get you to rent some of these spaces once it's built. Um, you can kind of see the, the whole idea is, is the framing of the natural elements uh, throughout. So when you see these interior shots and, and our, our decks on the back of some of these villas, the whole idea is going to be really uh, accentuating that as, a, as a, main, uh, a main focus of the overall site. Um, I'm happy to kind of answer if you guys have specific questions about things. I think one thing you'll notice here, Rob, you did ask about um, 
you know, putting together the, the materiality and showing you guys what we have. This is in the architectural set that's part of your package. But I think what's interesting about this is there isn't a lot of different materials here. It's really meant to create a very consistent materiality throughout the entire, the entire development. Um, you can kind of see as you work your way through the different renderings we did and the different building types, um, you'll, you'll notice that there are, are consistent elements. The, the standing seam roof, this is, this is one of my uh, favorite changes that we made after talking to Rob at length. Um, this building, you might remember, was a very kind of standard barn shape. Uh, we we took, took our cue with, uh, with some of the commentary. We created a clear story. Uh, I think the shape of this is better. Um, it allows us to get a little bit more natural light in there. Um, and, and again, the materiality is consistent. The charred woods, um, the glass, the metal, uh, you'll find in, in, in most, if not all, of the buildings. Paging down. Oh, go ahead, Michael. Just what I saw, it reminded me sort of a miniature of the Parish Museum out in the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. The light could come in now into the interior. Yeah, yeah. We're excited about the, uh, the possibilities there for sure. Um, the back, you know, the back of the, the event barn, uh, you know, very, very unique detail here that our <coughs> client is, is very uh, adamant about us figuring out how to actually do this, which we are doing now. Um, but the entire back wall will kind of rotate up, create a canopy uh, for outdoor indoor spaces there, looking out uh, over the area directly behind uh, those buildings. We've got some special <coughs> buildings here, the Hilltop Amenity. Um, working our way down some of the guest room villas those are the ones that surround uh, the area at the top again this is the more uh, public realm of our site um, you know the other thing we introduced here once you get down past the renderings um, when we did when we put the, the elevations together we added the fourth elevation at, at, at your request um, we also added a, a key plan and uh, Rob and I were both kind of uh, happy to, to see that. It gives everybody an opportunity to kind of understand the articulation of the buildings as you work your way around them, that there's no real <laughs> flat surfaces anywhere. Um, these are the individual villas. And you know, you kind of see this, this or I'll show you one more. Um, this is the four bedroom villa. You can kind of see that the, the, uh, the rendering we did here, this is off of what we call Revit. It's a, it's a, a, a drawing program. And then when we get to to this, it's a very similar, it's the building type is very similar, but you can kind of see this is really what we want, what we want people to, <laughs> to feel and, and think about when they, when they think about this site. Um, so, you know, when you do a comparative analysis between those two, you, I think you'll see which one is going to sell. Um, these elevations, again, I, you know, we did, we did uh, add all the, the um, dimensions that you guys had asked for uh, you get a very good sense none of these buildings get close to the height restrictions that we have um, keeping it all low profile uh, is a, is a uh, obviously an, a, a, uh, an intended uh, an intended thing on, on the design side our, our tree canopy is uh, 80 90 feet maybe even higher than that and our buildings are all below 50 feet so uh, obviously staying below that is, a, is an important piece of us kind of merging with uh, with nature here Right, your buildings have to be lower than 50 feet. I thought it was 60. I think it was 60 was max. We're below it, I promise. 60. You're in the 40. Our, ours are in the, the 40s. Yeah. So I thought you were in the 40. We right? are, yeah. The, or, uh, the below. Ones, or below. Or <coughs> below, exactly, exactly. Um, this, again, this is the, the main event uh, event building. We introduced this, uh, this chimney element, which will have kind of an indoor-outdoor fireplace. Um, again, at the uh, this is another recommendation Rob had early on. Uh, that we, we took advantage of. Um, you can kind of see the building is, has articulation all around, all four sides. And I'll kind of, I can open it up now, uh, you know, if anybody has any specific questions or wants to see any specific elements on the site. Um, you know, our goal, our goal today, guys, is to get to a point where you're comfortable. I think so far it's been a really nice dialogue, but uh, you know, we, we want to tie this in a bow and, and, and get it to you so you have the, the opportunity to really dissect these drawings. So before I call on my colleagues, I just want to point out something for their consideration as well. The uh, restriction or prescription really against flat roofs starts out of the code saying because it doesn't blend with the traditional architectural style of the town. There's not a lot of architecture over in this area, as you've said. And in addition, if you look at the adjoining site of the Culinary Institute, while it has Roth Hall, a very famous historic building and design, 
just on the just on the south side of it, they've got some 1960s dorms that have flat roofs and are pretty hideous, to be honest with you. <laughs> no offense to the culinary. <laughs> then you have uh, the old uh, diner, fake diner that was there for so long, and then you have the dorms. Uh, each one of these is a different architectural style that doesn't match, <coughs> so it's really kind of a hodgepodge. In this case, however, your s the styles that you're, see that you're sort of providing have a blend of that 60s, but improved because of the materiality and the newer dormitories. So I could argue that you already have buildings that are similar to this in the same vicinity. In addition, I think that in the center of town, and most of town where you have residential combined with, with uh, commercial, you do have some traditional architecture. And we value those, and we've strived to, like, say, for our McDonald's. McDonald's architecture, as you, you see, their standard stuff doesn't look like this one. This is more traditional in design. Um, and that's what, we try to, that's what we strive for, because it's in the code that we're supposed to create this sense of place within Hyde Park itself. And one way to do that is to say, I know I'm in Hyde Park because there's a certain architectural style that I see repeated. In this case, the public's not going to be going in there on a daily basis, and they can't really see much of it from Route 9 anyway. Um, you can see the utility buildings, I believe, and you already heard that most of us were like reacting in horror. Um, but that noted, I don't think that we're setting precedent, in other words, by permitting to have a different kind of style in this specific area. Number one, it does have different, some different standards. Building height is one of them in the St. Andrews District. Um, and another, that's a general again, guideline that flat roofs should not be exist inside Hyde Park. But as Anne has pointed out, too, and she grew up here, there's plenty of, of residential homes that were permitted, including right by me along the river that kind of have that Frank Lloyd Wright. Well, if you close your eyes and imagine yeah. there could be <laughs> falling water sort of look there. Um, but we'll, we'll say at best it's mid-century modern. So you already have a range of styles. And for me, again, if this were really visible on Route 9, I would have a different viewpoint of it. There's a reason why the hotel across the street from your project looks the way it does. Mm -hmm. They were trying to ask us about an architectural style, and we thought, okay, so you have Roth Hall, you're going to have a really tall building here. Why not have something similar and compatible so there's a visual echo and a sense that when you're entering Hyde Park, you're going to see maybe buildings of this quality. That's not to say that these buildings you're proposing aren't really high quality because they are, I know. Thank you. <laughs> um, having that much glazing ain't cheap, as we mm -hmm. put it politely. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, again, because of the amount of glazing you have and the materials you're choosing, all the stone and the metal, I could argue all day long that a flat roof or a semi-flat roof, sloping gently, um, matches the style of these. So for me, and I'm not trying to convince others on this, but we look at, we used to say that we set precedent on, on, this, uh, on the planning board. And indeed, it is possible for an applicant at a new sign to go, well, you let them do that over there. Yeah. But the truth of it is, is the ZBA sets precedence. We don't, because each site is analyzed on it for its different features. And what we allowed over there may not be allowed over here because this has got contextually other historic important buildings, et cetera. Just the fact, again, that the on one side you have Coco's and that <laughs> strip center that has um, the beer center in it. On the other, you have more modern structures, more recently built on the CIA. Again, seems compatible to me along the corridor. So I probably don't what the trade doesn't like me to do and argued for the applicant. But in this case, I know that you're looking for a concrete move forward, so you hear now what my opinion is. Um, let me start to the left. Mr. Veith, any uh, comments? I, I like the flat roofs. I like the look of it, and the uh, whole project's coming together. Thank you, Don. Mr. Waters, since you've been instrumental <laughs> in this. Well, I, I like the idea that, that you know, the, lo the lower roof line in this case allows you to be feel like you're in nature. And that's the point of it. Um, that if you could mirror that picture up there, <coughs> that's what we're working you, on. You're dead on. We're working um, on. I, I I like that the this different sites. You know, they're they're different. What what's going on across the street is different than what's going on in your site. I, I think that's going to only add to. Uh, it, it's not a competition. It will be a an enhancement for people to have such variety. Uh, they they have many options put it that way yep. and the, a lot of the people that are going to be staying in your site will have to go over there mm -hmm. and will want to shop in those those places so I think it's a great work and you know progress and and I think it's it's hitting all the it, it's hitting a lot of the marks appreciate and that, that you kept the materials to stone steel wood uh, earth Consistent. trees I think it's 
you know, Excellent. nature. Thank yep. you. Appreciate that. Yep. Thank you, Rob. Yep. Vice Chair Dexter. Um, I'd like to thank my, my colleague, Rob, for taking the time to work with you. I think it ultimately is a much better project and everybody gets really comfortable with it. I've never had a problem with it. To me, <laughs> I, I look at that upper left and to me that looks like my aunt and uncle's house except they didn't have two stories. Um, but it was beautiful and it was nestled in the woods and it, this to me says Hyde Park. Um, it's one of the elements of Hyde Park. And one of the things I was thinking is, as you go up Pinewoods Road, yes, there's mm -hmm. two uh, mid-century uh, moderns. Uh, yeah. There's like an 1800s, um, uh, I forget what they call it. With Comforter the, Gothic. The Comforter yeah, Gothic. The You've got, I mean, just go up there. That is we Hyde have, Park right there. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. Vice Chair Oliver. I will also echo Ann's comments. I, I see the picture. I see, you know, we've done site walks and, you know, that mid-century modern really uh, I think lends itself to the site with the different elevations and rock outcroppings mature trees etc you can really kind of nestle it in there and uh, I, I have no no objections to it thank you mr. Garcia I, I think it I think every project has to be evaluated on its own merits mm -hmm. and um, I think one doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the other worked on a lot of houses, built a lot of homes. I've built contemporary, colonials, etc. And uh, this looks to me like it's going to fit the land perfectly. Great. Appreciate that. Now you have direction. Ah, excellent. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. I think Michael's breathing. You haven't been breathing for months. <laughs> Lou's putting the oxygen tank sure. back in his bag. Lou is just maybe a little bit. Or two. Yeah, I think both of us. Let out. Yeah, I, that's great. Any comments from the consultants on the architectural styles? I didn't think so. I mean, just, you know, we did receive a narrative from Gensler. Uh, supporting the board's ability to modify the roof standards. So when it comes time to drafting the resolution, we'll incorporate some of the language from tonight. That's the reason why I spoke so long for the record, so you can put some of that in there, mm -hmm. um, as well as using the justification that Gens will provide, because they addressed also the practical uh, problems with trying to implement all the standards because that's remember these our standards are not one size fits everybody because that's not possible they have to be adjusted at times <laughs> so um, any other comments on any other part of the site probably not this was just for the architectural portion of it uh, looks like this is solved did you did you want to <laughs> discuss tonight at all our subdivision application I, I know at one point um, we submitted that and I I don't know if any, if people had an opportunity to look at it. It's the minor subdivision, so we can merge the sites. And have it up on we have it on for March 21st. Right. That's on March 21st. <coughs> okay. That's when it was set. Ms. Moss, did you have any? Have you looked at the subdivision? The, the, the lot line merger. Did you have any issues? You might have had time to look at it yet. The lot line merger. It, the yes. Did you see any issues in advance? I just glanced at it. I didn't study it extensively. I didn't see anything either. Victoria, have you, you haven't taken a look at it yet? Okay. What I'm trying to verbalize is when we were looking at it today, it was within the right piece was within the drawing set. Uh, yeah. You have to sign the subdivisions. The plat needs to be filed several times. Correct. Yeah, so you just have to, I mean, we'll make a comment, but it's right It's right in the middle of the set. You're going to have to pull it out as a, whatever, either at the beginning or at the end. Oh, that's the notes from So the you day. can file it. Yeah, so. yeah we'll figure it out. Yeah, so just to correct, the public hearing was continued to March 6th on the phase one, on the phase two and the subdivision. So it's March 6th, not 20th. The 21st is apparently what you're hoping for for approval, but yes. the discussion okay. is, okay. the public hearings continue to the 6th. Okay. And I, uh, just a procedural, um, I think we left, when we left the meeting, we met uh, with staff or we had some offline with staff 
and we were trying, I know Pete was going to try to pull together or working with everyone to pull together one set of co any further comments on the site plan. Um, That's usually Pete and Bonnie who do that. We all submit our comments to them at this point. Anybody has any comments? Uh, and I know we haven't we done it yet. We just did that for the phase one. Yeah, it wasn't sure if it was for the So for, uh, you know, you're looking for final comments on the site plans. So for any um, additional in, comments? In advance of March 6th, so we can if we need to address them. So we can either respond to them or, or so let me ask you, we. Respond for. One well, more that's time. what I want. Always make. respond first. Don't okay. submit new plans Don't because then we have to uh, analyze the new plans based on the old plans to see what the responses were. <laughs> Just respond first. <laughs> yeah, we're not. So we're not going to submit anything for March sixth. But no. you are going to get the comments to us, so we can at least respond conversationally. Well, I mean, we've been promising you, promising you that. So I think we need to you know, like deliver. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't want to speak. So <laughs> I don't want to speak, you know, for Bonnie, but I guess we should try to try to go shoot for some kind of a date to get them comments before the sixth. Ms. Moss raised her hand. Tad. Yeah, I, I was wanting, or didn't want to interrupt Pete. I'm trying to clarify if these are really flat roots or are they low slope. Roots? Low slope. Low slope. Yeah, low slope. tapered tapered insulation. Okay. Low slope. So um, typically what I'll do is I'll go through and uh, get some comments and then I'll review them uh, with Tad and then we'll review the drawings like together if it, you know if she if she has anything then I'll uh, incorporate them into my letter um, as I've said before you know I'm really just going to focus on uh, you know the grading uh, erosion control uh, the phasing because you know the health department's looking at water uh, and sewer it's nothing that the town's going to take over um, so uh, now did you want me to look at the site plan stuff too with you or sure. well I know I'm talking about <laughs> well no I mean everybody yeah. no, but I mean did you want me to look at certain things on the site plan or? we normally have separate memos we can put it together but it's you know but what we I'll should coordinate otherwise I'll coordinate with Pete so we don't have a lot of overlap that's what I said it's usually done by both of them and yeah. board if you have any additional comments and Bonnie I'll get you my comments by Monday okay um, I think I only have a couple that I've been working on so far so okay. I'll go through the rest so if anybody has any comments please get them to Bonnie she can incorporate them into her final memo uh, the first March 1st all right so is next week. Uh, next Friday is the first? Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we should probably try to shoot for the first. us having a discussion amongst ourselves by midweek and then finalizing something for towards the end of we'll, the week. We'll, we'll have this. We have the agenda meeting next week. We will have a discussion on this anyway. Okay. Okay. We can make it a longer agenda meeting so if you'd do like. you think you can maybe get them to us by after the agenda meeting of by the end of the week yeah that's week. I think that's what we got to shoot for because we've been promising you this for a while so that'll give us three three or four days to look at it and try to be ready to speak to, to be fair we just finished looking at phase one today <laughs> yeah <laughs> so there was a lot of looking so could you just uh, could you just uh, update us as far as where you are with some of the other agency uh, approvals only because you know yeah. we we're, said we're thank you Michael He's been trained. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. Her work is done. <laughs> Play dead, lawyer. <laughs> um, Army Corps of Engineers, done. Go ahead. Start your work according to your plan. Um, Shippo, you saw. Uh, Fish and Wildlife, you saw it. DC, they s you saw their initial comment letter. Then they said, when you're done with secret, get back to us. So we That's sent them the pedestrian bridge, right? Excuse me, the pedestrian bridge, right? Yes, yes. Okay. We sent back. Um, we sent them. I know Cynthia did also, but we we sent them a point by point response to their previous memo and. 
um, and sent them the Secra. So we'll hopefully hear something soon from them. DOT, they have our plans. There's, they've had them for a while. Uh, Lance has told us we should be getting back their comments, but again, we that plan was prepared with them. I know. So you know. I mean, that's that's right. as, far as, as far as, you know, the DOT goes, I mean, we know there's going to be a left turn lane northbound. Yeah. We yeah. know there's going to be X amount of lanes coming into your site. We know there's going to be a new yep. light. Yep. So, I mean. They've had plans for you know. two months, I right. think. They're, so, they're, I think they're good. We haven't heard anything, but right. we'll have something yeah, back soon. <laughs> the only other two are, I'll defer to Chris <laughs> on Dutchess County. We have our plans uh, we're looking to submit, hopefully by the end of next week, back to the Health Department and uh, to Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority, uh, based on their first round of comments. Um, okay. I mean, you know. Maybe next week, at the end of next we week. We don't need, like, the approvals, following week. but as long as you're further, as long as you're pretty far down, you know, the road and that the plans aren't going to, you know, showing a valve here, showing a valve there, that's not going to, but... You know, there's nothing. We just want to make sure there's nothing major yeah, so on the far, con whenever far. we get around to condition. <laughs> yeah, th there's there's nothing major. We've just you know the only thing is we've just switched I, where uh, some of the I sanitary is flowing. I from believe them. I believe that you said that uh, the county uh, that the county health department was working back and forth with you in terms of just marking up like drawings and giving them to you. They gave that to us. How'd you manage that? Because I want to get into that program. <laughs> It l that was my no, first. Like, that was no, my first as well. Uh, but uh, <laughs> no, I I, I don't no, think I'm that's going to be a continuation. Like but uh, we're hoping to get written comments next time. All right, uh, so, so looking forward to those two. Can we talk about the um, the ever popular railroad? Um, you know, I know they were. It seemed like they were kind of holding you hostage there for. Uh, so. I don't know. Maybe you can just give an update. So we know that Lou is over there going. Arr. I've had several discussions with them over the last month. We we even agreed. We they wanted an open-ended check, a check of forty thousand dollars initially, and then whatever more to just look at the potential blasting issues and and you know the the size of the of the drainage which is going through now mm -hmm. um lou said look we'll can we do it for a little less and and made an offer and they said okay that's fine and <laughs> thought we had it and then they sent us back something that said well 17 will be the first installment but you know it's <laughs> we we reserve the right and we intend to ask for much more so i think we're at i mean lou's been banging on the door banging on the door i think what we're going to end up doing is having to put into the resolution we will we will comply all with right. all the monitoring and protocols blasting yeah, protocols i, I, I mean we'll work that. something out because i know that's i mean i know from a couple past jobs they're just impossible well it's impossible but Difficult, possible. <laughs> yeah. Unless, <laughs> unless <laughs> Michael, unless you want to do a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have any friends down here. <laughs> well, that he's referring to a day that I didn't make friends. Down there. <laughs> All right, that's fine. So you're so you're moving. Uh, I weave okay. numerous conversations with. No, I know. I know. Cars. I know. I know. Outreach. I, knew I know. You know. Why so much? Are they retaining professionals to do the review and that's paying for it? Or just, uh, hey, you got to pay us this? Um, Be careful, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> they originally said 40000 and Jeez actually Christ. the second time around, they went up to 53000 Now, wait a minute. So that's, that's for a tabletop review. And that's not even that's not even the cost of their guys to monitor, to basically nope. plant them there. That would be additional on top of it. Oh. That's the, what they wanted me to sign for a contract with them, is that it was open-ended, basically mm -hmm. saying that the minute I started signing this and they started working on it, 53000 was the initial cost, and it was just going to go from there. Mm -hmm. It does look reasonable. It, it's... <laughs> 
We are. Crazy. Crazy. I mean, you know, we're. we're I mean, cheap. we're easy. We're cheap. <laughs> we're cheap. <laughs> All right, you, I'm that's happy fine. to share it with you if you want to read. No, it. no, 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 no. I don't. It's just I don't like that kind of stuff. But that's fine. Now look, we're going to have to like any other structure that's within a re, you know within a reasonable certain range. You know of the yeah. blasting protocols. We're going to have to follow them religiously, and we're going to have to do monitoring. We're going to have to do our own meters, and we're going to have to do, I'm sure, pre and post, you know, documentation you yeah. and all the others. So we're going to do it. All right. So. Just Chris, have you got as your office um, inspected uh, the? I mean, not. I don't mean go through it, but have you looked at the culver going underneath the tracks? And you're comfortable that it's in acceptable condition. I mean, the water is going there now, so I mean. Yeah, I mean. And we we're doing a stormwater pollution prevention plan. That's gonna. I believe it says that, you know, you're gonna be mitigating what your site and again i know we're at the hudson so yeah we're we're, we're beating the peak <laughs> of the <laughs> door there so all right so we'll work yeah. it out i mean this we'll work it out it, okay. it's capable of, of holding a, a rail car as it travels over yeah i mean and they're pretty they're, <laughs> they're pretty uh <laughs> they're pretty heavy yeah and they're they're like pretty good about looking at all you know their crossings to make because yeah, they got trains around over I think their focus was on something else, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, they were okay with. I mean, we've we've sent them all our documents. It's not as if they don't yeah. have our documents. They've had them now for yeah, maybe okay, eight that's months. fine. All right, so mm. that's good. So you gave us so you gave us an update. We're good. Yeah, even the letter they would give us wouldn't approve anything. It would stay, and and the the gentleman I spoke to said the letter will say that further discussion needs to occur before blasting would occur so basically it, says it wasn't even final a discussion no. to have a discussion uh, we'll deal with it we'll deal. i just want to remind everyone the railroad has absolutely no permitting authority over I this know. project I know. No, i'm just going to point this out again they have no permitting authority we're going above and beyond we've already concluded seeker I'm trying to be kind being kind, but that's b the applicant would be undertaking some of this at their own risk because if the owner of the tracks wants to sue them, they would sue them. Right. I, I understand. Just putting that out. Yeah. You're right. So there's one other agency who's still before. That's the ZBA. I believe that the uh, Dutchess County Planning required a super majority. Do you know where you stand? Sorry, ZBA is February 28th. Um, as you all know, the county said four out of the five were acceptable and didn't didn't um, deny it or, or negatively comment on them. Uh, the fifth one, the one they did negatively comment on was the 1,700 square foot grading, temporary grading for the spawn pool and the stream car. That's temporary. There's all going to be replanted. It's all going to be trees and the like. They didn't even mention in the letter it was going to be temporary. Um, didn't even cite to that by if we were not to do that grading because of the topography of that area we'd have to put in a 12 foot retaining wall where now we're only putting in a five foot open faced one with all replanted area so we made a submission we sent a letter explaining all this to the zba and i'm hoping they'll they'll consider it thank you anything else everyone Look, what they were here for tonight, we got through the architecture. That was that a big one. It yes. was great. Thank you for the so direction on that and, and everything else. And we'll see you, you on March 6th already? March 6th. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Safe travels back home. Yep. And the last, the last item on the agenda is Bellfield PUD Phase 2 Subdivision. Wow. So... We have a recommendation <coughs> to waive the public hearing, or we could consider waiving the public hearing for final plat because it does not require TADS. Which is why this is not a public hearing. All right. Do you guys want to add something to add more color and flavor to this? Yes. No, no, no. I'm talking to the consultants. Anybody have any questions on this? We all know what we're doing. No. Do you need a motion? <laughs> to waive the public hearing, yes. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 
Any nays or abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. That is to waive the public hearing for this final plat for 96.414B 7A for the record. <coughs> and now we have a resolution prepared to grant the final plat. Does anybody have any questions about that? Just a reminder, this was a, the plat, the board approved the preliminary plat many months ago. The new plat came in. It only contained the revisions that we requested. <coughs> there were no substantial changes. Any comments you'd like to make, Mr. Boudreau? <laughs> now you're just here to hear that resolution read. If there are other questions, then I believe this is Rob's? Yes. Resolution to grant final plat approval. Bellfield <laughs> Final Development Plan Phase 2 Subdivision, February 21st, uh, 2024. Resolution 2022-28D. Whereas, 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 whereas. Whereas, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Board hereby grants final plat approval to the final Phase 2 plat and authorizes the chairperson or, or his authorized designee to sign the final phase two plat subject to the following conditions. One, payment of all outstanding fees in escrow. Be it further resolved that prior to the zoning administrator authorizing the issuance of any certificate of occupancy for any structure on, on any lot created by the final phase two plat the applicant shall provide evidence of installation of monuments and pins at the lot, co lot corners as indicated on the final phase two plat. Be it further resolved that prior to the chairperson or his authorized designee signing the approved site plan for any lot created by the final phase two plot, the applicant shall provide the planning board with a PDF of the filed map signed and filled, filed, final phase two plat. Second. Thank you, Anne. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any answer abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, one question. Mm -hmm. um, when would it be signed? I believe that Mr. Sotero has to do a sign-off letter. Yeah, I'll write a, uh, I'll be here um, tomorrow in the morning. I'm going to write it. Uh, I'm all good, so if you want to sign it tonight, if you've got everything else, I'll write my letter first thing, first thing in the morning. I can sign it tonight. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I knew where you were going. That's why I had to ask his permission. So to speak. Yeah, you, no, you can sign it. We're good. Yeah. Uh, I'll, write, I'll write, write the letter tomorrow. So what, what I'll do is file the map tomorrow, and once I get uh, 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 the legal uh, numbers that need to be put into the easement then we'll do that and then the easements will be filed the following day so that's, that's great that's the idea and then <coughs> the site plans uh, we deli deliver them today DOH is all signed off on them. congratulations thank wow. you very much so wow that's it the next next big step for Bellafield yes, yes it is we're very very excited and by the way I wasn't here obviously to go to the after planning board party, but I heard nice things about yes, it. Yes. Yes. Just the tour. <laughs> Sorry, just the tour. We had a tour. We had a tour. With refreshments. Well, it was uh, a pleasure to do, and we'll do it again. As I said, I and uh, just for everyone's edification, I believe that Tom told me today that the ribbon cutting is May 2nd? Yes, May 2nd. 530 to 730? Yes. So board, mark your calendars, consultants, if you'd like to attend. This should be the big, this is the big rah-rah hoo -rah Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, <coughs> another <coughs> interesting note, uh, Saturday we had 92% occupancy. Wow. Nice. We had how much? Wow. 92. 92% occupancy. Holy cow. I thought wow. you weren't using the full Marriott reservation system yet. But are you? Um, we're ramping up nicely. So what about? Doing so good. What's next, Larry? Um... City winery, apartments, Neat village green. Trees, right? That's that's what's next. Wow. So. City winery, as I understand it, the Tom told me that the building was designed, and then the owner of city winery said, "Whoa!" at the cost, and so yeah. it's being value engineered. That's what we're doing. That scary thing that we always hear about value engineered. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, but we'll we'll get it right. We're yeah. very very excited about it. I was at an event where he said, "I've been trying to get into Hyde Park, and I didn't want to say who I was, so I just shut my mouth." <laughs> 
and no, grin. Oh, really? Yeah, unusual <laughs> for me, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> At any rate, that's fun. Good luck with those well, steps. Thank you for for all your help. And Appreciate I'll be it. staying here tonight to sign. Okay, thank you. Uh, reminder before we adjourn that the Relier site visit is this Saturday, uh, February 24th at 1 p.m. Oh, thank you. Oh, at 1 p.m. Yes. Yep, oh, at 1 p.m. I can't be there because I have a board retreat. Um, and actually, our facilitator for our board retreat is staying at the Inn at Bellafield. I huh? said, really? he said, should I stay at the Marriott Courtyard or where else should I go? And I went, no, 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 stay in my town. It's the newest place. Um, that's, uh, that's an all-day event for, for us at the, on the board of trustees at the college, so I can't make it. But... If someone would like to take just no, so brief notes and send them out to anybody who can't make it, that would be appreciated. Otherwise, make it a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you, consultants. Thank you for your patience. Thank you to the town board for providing the resources so that we're televised on Channel 22. And thank you, Tony, back there. Yes. Do you need, do you need any paperwork signed? Young man, do you need any paperwork?